reserving the right to get that property back if they don't build within a certain period of time because they choose not to or because they can't get financing, even though developers could. So if I had that the right to build on there and I just, because of my own circumstances, I can't build, but you come along and you have a reputation as a developer and you're excellent and you can get the financing to build that and I can't, the city will have the right to say, you no longer have the right to build it, he does. And that's what I mean by building in the protection so that they don't land bank it. And by land banking, I mean just that. Basically, tuck it aside and say 10, 15 years ago, uh, years later, when I get, when I'm in a position to start building down here, I'll build what I'm going to build other places then. This way I keep lining up my work. That doesn't do us any good. So that's what I mean by land banking. And the second question you asked, Oh, education funding formula. They're actually working on it. I have to commend the superintendent of schools. For years we've been trying to get the state to change the formula. But listen, that's all political. The whole thing is political. All the upstate communities are going to fight any change to the formula out of fear that they will get less and we will get more. Because we get more, they get less. They don't want to do that. We have said time and again, we're not looking to stop Rochester and Buffalo and Syracuse and Albany and Binghamton who are not in real good financial condition and probably even when we were doing well before this big slump in the economy, they were still in bad shape. We don't want to stop you from funding and helping them, but start recognizing the needs of our city. Superintendent of Schools over the last couple of months has put together an evaluation of that formula and why it doesn't work for Yonkers and how it could be changed in such a way that it will work for Yonkers. As it turns out, it not only works for Yonkers, it also helps Mount Vernon, New Rochelle, Fort Chester, Peekskill, and the one other city or, or town, all of whom are in much, not in anywhere near the kind of financial shape of most of Westchester County, like Bronxville, Scarsdale, East Chester, uh, Chappaqua, Pleasantville, and many others. Because what happens is they take Westchester County, they lump us in with them, they say your value of your homes is so high on average. Your income levels and, and household incomes are so high, on average, that you're a wealthy community. Well, we certainly don't compare to Chappaqua, or Bronxville, or Scarsdale, nor does Mount Vernon and those other cities, I say. What this would do is it would treat us as a subset within this very wealthy county and allow us to be funded in a way that better reflects the needs of our school system and the needs of the city as compared to the rest of Westchester County and probably put us in a better condition relative to Rochester, Buffalo, and Syracuse, and the others. Uh, they just talk, it'll work. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. Not to take anything away from Rochester and give them exactly. their due, but certainly for too long we've been lumped in unfairly with Westchester County, so um, any help that you need along those lines and support is certainly, I think, uh, We'll get from this community, and it's a really a worthwhile effort to do at this time. Well, thank you. I will say this: that we we go up, we all do a tag team. The superintendent and I, uh, the council will go up. Everybody gets their chance to go up and lobby for this change and lobby for more money for the city. And he said when he was sitting down with the budget people just about a week and a half ago, not even a week ago, and they were saying, well, this doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and this doesn't work. This new formula they came up with, this amendment doesn't work. And one of the budget people said, excuse me, yeah, it does. Probably spoke out of turn. Because I don't think the legislators and the budget people for the state really wanted to hear somebody say, yeah, this really does work. But he said, yeah, it really does work. It does what the superintendent and the city really want done. Maybe not completely, but in large part. And by the way, it also helps some of the other cities that are not wealthy and could use the help too. So they're now working on that. I'm, we're going to be pushing very hard. The only thing I would encourage you to do is let your, your state legislators know that encourage them to push hard to make sure that the kind of change that would allow us to get more fair funding of our schools is one that you want to see happen. We need it to happen and now is certainly the best time for us in this fiscal crisis. I know the state doesn't want to do it, but fair is fair. And that's something we're looking to get done this year. If we can do that, it relieves us from us, as a city side, some of the burden, the financial burden of funding the school system, and that saves more money on the city side so that we can fund police and fire and, and the other departments so that we can continue to provide services without having to come out there and hit with big taxes. So yeah, anything you can do, notify your, your uh, state representative 
the senator and senator saying, we've heard about this, we know you're working on it, we encourage you to push, everybody here needs it, don't stop until you get it. Yes. Hello, hello, Mr. Mayor. Hi. Um, I uh, have come here tonight with my cohort here to ask your assistance in a matter um, related to the film business. Um, we're very interested in bringing a particular project of film that we're working on currently to the city of Yonkers. And um, as is the nature of our business, we're always seeking beautiful locations, one of which is particularly uh, Yonkers Courthouse. Um, as far as our negotiations have gone, um, up to now, we have been told that we could come to the courthouse, um, obviously with a specific location fee. Um, and then on today, as a matter of fact, we were told that actually, and not from my contact, but from him talking to someone else, that the fee had more than tripled, which is completely outside our budget. And what I wonder is um, if there's someone that I can talk to about bringing this business, because I, I think that this business would really um, help the city of Yonkers, but help the city in general, and if there's a way that we can we can negotiate something. I'm not aware of a tripling the fee, but if you want to know something you can talk to, <laughs> turn around. His hand is up. Go right to him right now. Really? Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We deliver. <laughs> Sometimes faster than others, but we deliver. Right. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Um, I'm a homeowner and a Yonkers taxpayer, and I'm also a Yonkers teacher. Um, unfortunately, I was laid off five years ago, and uh, Mayor, as you know, the non-core areas go first, and I'm an um, art teacher. So I'm living in constant fear that I probably don't have a job in September. Now, I don't mean to put you on the spot, and I'm not here as a union you know, rep. I am a union member, but I'm not representing them. I'm just here as my own person. Um, do you foresee layoffs in September? Can you possibly answer that? I don't need to put you on the spot. No, you don't have to. Uh, believe me. You survive me, but I understand it. I don't know. Okay. I, I'm not predicting layoffs in, the, uh, in September. Whatever's going to happen, though, we will know probably by the end of June and not in September. Because the new budget has to go into effect yet, July 1st. And by that time, in fact, within the next couple of weeks, the superintendent has told me already he's going to be presenting his budget, his proposed budget, to the board, uh, the trustees of the Board of Education. And that will give an indication on what programs, if any, are going to be cut or scaled back, uh, what positions would be eliminated. And he, too, recognizes that although the non-core subjects have to be the ones that go before the core subjects, <coughs> All of that adds, all of those subjects add to the quality education of a child. That's why we formed the Partners in Education, a not-for-profit group to raise money to help. As you know, they're providing uh, the um, Kaplan courses for the SAT preparation for a lot of the children, which made a huge difference in their, uh, in their SAT scores. They're providing college counseling services now. They're, they're kind of doing those kinds of things that the Board of Education can't afford to pay for right now. As far as what the budget's going to be for next year's school year, we don't know it yet. I can tell you the superintendent and working together with him, we're doing everything in our power to make sure that we don't have to cut anybody. Anybody. Well, you know, a lot of cities really are somewhat bloated. I don't feel that we're bloated. We, there are places we can save money. There are places we can make, do things more efficiently. But I don't feel like we're bloated. Our budget has gone up on average on the city side about two and a half percent over the last five years each year, which is below the cost of living increases. So we've kept it very lean. And the Board of Education has gone up more than that, but it was done so it was done so uh, intentionally because we're trying to build a better school system, bring back some of this, the subjects that we didn't have that we had to cut that first year. And that was an intentional uh, uh, increase above the cost of living. Much of it came from the city. We put 